Hi everybody, my name is Raul Casas and I'm a systems architect with the IP group at Cadence. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the challenges we're faced with when building automatic speech recognition systems for embedded designs. Uh, whenever we're talking about an embedded design, we got to talk about the key design criteria, which are performance, cost, and power consumption. Uh, for automatic speech recognition systems, uh, performance is measured in terms of the accuracy of a transcription and the time taken to do it. Cost is related to the silicon area required for um, complexity of calculations and storage of data. And finally, uh, power consumption is the key design criterion uh, for mobile devices and for smart battery operated devices. Let's look at this uh, simple automatic speech recognition system which uh, for state-of-the-art uh, systems is built based on deep neural network technology. We start with an audio stream that gets pre-processed into a set of features, uh, which are basically vectors coming in and streaming into the rest of the system. And let's assume that these features are streaming in at 100 hertz. These features can be as simple as the, the magnitude of the coefficients of an FFT. They go into a deep neural network that is going to be built uh, out of uh, blocks like convolutional neural network layers and uh, residual neural network layers. And so let's assume inside this block that we have a vanilla recurrent neural network. So we have a vanilla RNN that has a state update that's an active, a nonlinear activation of a weight matrix times the previous state, plus another weight matrix times the input, plus some bias term. In a typical system, you can find states that are as big as 1,000 elements by one, which means that this matrix here is going to have 1,000 by 1,000 parameters, which is 1 million parameters and another million parameters for this other weight matrix. Now, doing this inside an embedded DSP would be very costly. Um, so we don't put all of these parameters in local memory, and what we do is we put them in system memory. So now we have two million parameters in here, and those are gonna be pipelined through local memory into the DNN uh, for processing in chunks, and this is done in a pipeline fashion. If we assume eight bits for each one of those parameters, now we have two megabytes of data going in. And if we assume that uh, this RNN has to be updated at a rate of 100 hertz, then we have 200 megabytes per second streaming into this uh, system. Now, a vanilla RNN is a very simple uh, recurrent neural network. In modern uh, state-of-the-art systems, you wouldn't see a vanilla RNN. You would see something like an LSTM, a long short-term uh, memory uh, network. And those can have five times the complexity of a vanilla RNN. Okay, so now uh, we go into the rest of the processing where we have a decoder. And the decoder, uh, we'll take in the output of the network, which is a set of character probabilities. Those are also streaming in at 100 hertz. And um, each one of these will give a probability for a unit of sound corresponding to the input features. The job of the decoder is to take these probabilities and convert them to the transcribed text. So uh, again, here the decoder relies on a language model that sits in here in system memory. For the example we've picked, we can have a, uh, a model that has up to 389 megabytes of data. And the way the decoder works is it generates a small phrase that it tests against the language model and sends in 
an address through a hash function. Then data is retrieved, it's sent to the decoder for it to uh, update the probabilities of a certain key phrase. And then finally, we pick the phrase with the highest probability and give you the text. So we've measured, uh, for this example, we have about seven gigabits per second, gigabits per second of memory access bandwidth. So today, we've seen an example of an ASR system and the different types of challenges in the different blocks. This block has a high computational complexity and kind of a high uh, requirement for storage and memory access. For the decoder, computational complexity is not as high, but the memory requirement is much higher, and also the memory access bandwidth uh, is, is high. So thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you at the next uh, Whiteboard Wednesday.